The desert nobody expected to love. A sea of sand, wind like a blade. Nothing but bleached dunes as far as the eye can see. Then, cut to green, tiny shoots, soft rabbit warrens, birds return, life returns. How did 1.2 million rabbits turn a wasteland into an oasis? Picture this. A drone pulls back from a barren ridge. The wind roars in the headphones. The frame tilts, and suddenly the sand gives way to lines of green, paths, groves, and small ponds. A rabbit slips into frame, nose twitching, disappearing into a burrow. The soundtrack softens from wind to faint bird song. The contrast is so sharp it feels like a trick, but it's real. I promise two things in this video. First, we'll follow the rabbits, their habits, their numbers, their secrets. Second, we'll follow the science and the money, how ecology and economy braided together to remake this place. No myths, no magic, just clever design, biology, and people who bet on an odd idea. So, stay with me. Because what looks like a simple animal story is actually a blueprint for fixing the planet. Next, we need to understand why that blueprint was needed in the first place. For decades, China's deserts were not just landscapes. They were warnings. Imagine villages swallowed by sand, farmland turning to dust, entire families forced to abandon homes as dunes crept forward, meter by meter, year by year. By the 1990s, China faced one of the worst desertification crises on Earth. Over 1.7 million square kilometers of land, nearly one-fifth of the nation, had turned barren. Crops failed, rivers dried, and dust storms rolled over cities hundreds of miles away, darkening skies in Beijing and Seoul. The land itself seemed to be disappearing, and the numbers kept growing. In the early 2000s, China was losing 10,000 square kilometers of fertile land every single year, the equivalent of a small country fading into sand. It wasn't just an environmental problem. It was an economic and human disaster. Food prices rose. Rural poverty deepened. Children grew up thinking yellow sandstorms were just part of spring, but China refused to accept that fate. The nation decided to fight back, not just with trees, but with innovation, science, and a bold new vision for how deserts could live again. Next, let's look at where that vision began, with one scientist who dared to think beyond trees. His name was Qian Shuisen, a legendary Chinese scientist often called the father of China's space program. But in the late 1980s, Qian turned his mind from rockets to something more down-to-earth sand. At the time, China's main weapon against desertification was simple, plant more trees. But Qian saw the flaw. Trees alone couldn't survive the heat, drought, and shifting sands. He believed the fight against deserts needed more than forests. It needed a living system. He argued that the key wasn't just planting life, but designing an ecosystem where every part supported the others, grasslands to anchor soil, animals to enrich it, crops to sustain people, and trees to protect it all. In his words, if you want to stop the desert, make it worth living in. That idea flipped the script. Entrepreneurs and scientists began to see barren land not as a burden, but as potential an opportunity to build something new, an industry rooted in ecology, and so began one of China's boldest experiments, combining business, biology, and barren sand. But no one expected the hero of this story would be a rabbit. Meet the Rex Hare, or as locals call it, the desert rabbit with velvet fur. At first glance, it looks ordinary. Short ears, plush coat, gentle eyes, but hidden beneath that soft fur lies an ecological superpower. This rabbit didn't come from China at all. It was originally bred in France, known for its luxurious fur used in high-end coats and hats. When Chinese researchers heard of its adaptability to dry, clean environments, they saw a strange opportunity. What if the desert, normally seen as lifeless, could actually be the perfect home for this animal? So they brought the Rex Hare to the Dalet Banner Desert in Inner Mongolia, one of China's harshest landscapes. Many laughed at the idea. Rabbits in the desert? They said they'd die in weeks. 
but the opposite happened. The Rex hare thrived. It dug, it bred, and it reshaped the soil itself. This wasn't just an experiment. It was the beginning of a quiet revolution, led by one of nature's simplest creatures. Rex hares are natural engineers. Every movement they make transforms the desert, grain by grain. As they dig for roots and hay, their paws churn the hardened sand, aerating it like tiny plows. What was once packed and lifeless becomes loose and breathable. This simple action lets air and moisture seep deeper into the soil. Then comes the next step in nature's quiet alchemy. Fertilization. Every handful of droppings the rabbits leave behind is packed with nutrients and undigested grass seeds. Over time, this organic layer builds up, feeding microbes and giving new plants a fighting chance to grow. Soon, sprigs of green begin to appear, fragile at first, but multiplying fast. The survival rate of desert plants shot up to a reported 96%, something scientists once thought impossible. What had been like concrete was turning into a sponge, alive, fertile, self-sustaining. But the most astonishing part wasn't just the soil's rebirth. It was how fast the rabbits multiplied to make it happen. A single Rex hare can give birth to around 40 baby rabbits each year, and those babies mature fast, ready to breed within months. Multiply that by thousands, and you get an ecological force that grows faster than the desert can reclaim the land. Within just a few years, the project expanded from a handful of test colonies to over 1.2 million rabbits thriving across Inner Mongolia's sandy plains. What started as a gamble had become a living army of soil builders. But this wasn't chaos. It was carefully engineered growth. Farmers rotated breeding zones, managed food sources, and built shaded burrows to prevent overheating. Every decision, from feeding to fencing, was designed to keep balance between population and land. And it worked. The more the rabbits multiplied, the faster the land healed. The sand stopped moving, the grass spread wider, and moisture began to linger longer in the ground. Yet, the true genius of this plan wasn't just about rabbits. It was about what surrounded them, a living cycle that made the entire system unstoppable. At the heart of this transformation lies a simple but brilliant ecological loop, a partnership between plants, animals, and people. It begins with Salix, a hardy desert shrub that grows where almost nothing else can. Its deep roots grip the sand, stopping the wind from carrying it away. Its leaves and bark provide nutritious feed for the rabbits. In return, the rabbit's waste enriches the soil, helping the salix grow thicker and stronger. Together, they turn drifting dunes into living ground. But the cycle doesn't stop there. The rabbit's soft fur, prized for luxury clothing, created a new desert industry. Meat from the Rex hare became a local delicacy. Profits from these industries funded more salix planting, more breeding facilities, and even small local businesses like fur processing and ecotourism. It was the perfect loop, ecology feeding economy and economy feeding ecology. The result? Desert control was no longer a government expense. It became a profitable movement. And behind the numbers were real lives, people whose entire futures changed with the rabbit's return. Before the rabbits came, life in the Dalat Banner Desert was a struggle for survival. Families lived on the edge, literally. The sand advanced every year, swallowing farmland, wells, and roads. Young people left for cities, leaving behind empty villages and honestly, hopeless elders. Then came the rabbits and with them, opportunity. Local herders learned to raise Rex hares, earning steady income for the first time in decades. Families who once made just a few hundred dollars a year suddenly saw their annual incomes reach nearly $20,000. Deserted homes filled again. Children returned. Schools reopened. Some families began selling fur to clothing companies. Others opened small restaurants serving organic rabbit dishes. Tourists started visiting what was once a lifeless wasteland, just to witness the rabbits that tamed the desert. 
The land healed, but so did the people. Poverty lines faded. Community pride returned. And as the green spread, China's scientists began tracking something remarkable. Not just stories of success, but hard data showing that the desert itself was changing faster than anyone imagined. Satellite images told the story better than any words could. Over a decade, what once appeared as endless yellow dunes began turning patches of green, expanding year after year like veins of life spreading through the desert. In some regions of Inner Mongolia, the land once written off as unrecoverable saw vegetation coverage rise from 15% to over 70%. Wind erosion dropped dramatically. Dust storms, once so frequent they turned skies brown for days, began to fade. Rainfall even increased slightly as the new vegetation helped trap moisture and stabilize local climates. China's scientists realized they had done something extraordinary. They'd accelerated desert reversal, a process that normally takes centuries, and achieved it in under 20 years. And while the world often looks to high-tech solutions for climate recovery, satellites, AI, carbon capture, this miracle was driven by something far humbler, soft-furred creatures digging in the dirt. But as the success spread, a bigger question loomed. Could this model work beyond China's borders, in the deserts of Africa, the Middle East, or even America's Southwest? Experts around the world took notice. Environmentalists from Saudi Arabia, Egypt, and even the U.S. state of Arizona began studying China's rabbit desertification model. At first, many were skeptical. Could something so simple, we, so low-tech, really solve a global crisis that billions in green technology had barely dented? But the evidence was impossible to ignore. Where the rabbits thrived, biodiversity increased, water retention improved, and desert advance stopped. Delegations visited Inner Mongolia, taking soil samples, documenting changes, and interviewing villagers. Some nations began pilot projects, introducing the rex hare and similar species into controlled desert areas. Early results were promising. Yet this raised a deeper truth. Success wasn't just about rabbits or shrubs. It was about balance. Understanding that nature's smallest engineers can sometimes do what machines and money cannot. Still, not every story was perfect. Challenges emerged. Overbreeding, competition with native species, and the risk of ecological imbalance. China's next test was learning how to control the power it had unleashed. And that's where the story turns, from triumph to the delicate art of keeping nature's miracle in check. Critics warned that introducing millions of rabbits could easily backfire, pointing to Australia's century-old ecological disaster, where imported rabbits multiplied uncontrollably and devastated native ecosystems. Was China repeating history under a greener label? Project leaders responded with science and strategy. The rex hare was carefully selected for its controlled breeding traits and high dependence on managed habitats. Fencing, rotational grazing, and predator monitoring became standard practice. Veterinarians ran disease screenings, while engineers designed smart enclosures to regulate density and prevent escapes. Water usage another major concern, was minimized by pairing rabbit colonies with drought-resistant salix plants, which not only stabilized dunes but also stored moisture in their roots. It wasn't flawless, but the system evolved. Instead of chasing a miracle cure, planners embraced adaptation, learning, adjusting, and building resilience. As one project scientist put it, there's no silver bullet in ecology, only silver balance. And that philosophy, more than the rabbits themselves, would carry this desert experiment onto the global stage. Recognition came swiftly and loudly. What began as a regional experiment soon drew national headlines. By 2024, the project was officially named a Global Desert Restoration Demonstration Zone, attracting scientists, investors, and policymakers from across Asia, Africa, and the Middle East. The numbers told their own story, 
vegetation cover up by over 30%, soil carbon levels rebounding, and plans to scale from 1.2 million to 1.8 million rabbits by 2025. But behind the figures was momentum, a sense that this wasn't just about China's desert anymore. It was a model for the world. Expansion meant more salix plantations, new breeding centers, and even the birth of ecotourism. Visitors began arriving to see the rabbits that tamed the sand. Local families opened guest houses, selling handmade crafts and rabbit fur products, symbols of renewal and pride. Government delegations from arid nations, from Saudi Arabia to Egypt, toured the site, eager to learn how biology and industry could work hand in hand. The world was watching, and for the first time, a desert looked like the future, not the past. When you strip the story down to its bones, the message is simple but profound. Lesson 1. Think in loops, not lines. Every part of the system, soil, plant, animal, human, feeds the next. That's how the desert stopped dying. Not through one big fix, but through a living cycle that balanced profit with preservation. Lesson two, align survival with livelihood. When people earn from restoring nature instead of destroying it, the change sustains itself. A green economy isn't charity, it's strategy. Lesson three, Small players can make massive shifts. In this case, not a mega dam or satellite technology, but rabbits. Soft, silent engineers of resilience. They remind us that transformation often starts small, multiplying quietly until the world can't ignore it. So the rabbit oasis isn't just a quirky ecological experiment. It's a mirror reflecting how we might restore our planet through balance, innovation, and humility before nature's design. And now, one question remains. If rabbits can reshape a desert, what could we reshape in our own communities? The camera drifts over the dunes. Only now, they're alive. Patches of green ripple under a golden sunset, and rabbits dart between the salic shrubs. You can almost feel the breeze, softer now, carrying the scent of grass instead of dust. A voice rises, calm, reflective, certain. Once this was a wasteland, now it breathes again because people dared to think differently. We end where we began, in the desert nobody expected to love. But it's not just about rabbits, or China, or one oasis. It's about ingenuity, about seeing opportunity where the world sees emptiness. If a few thousand rabbits can spark a living ecosystem in the harshest place on Earth, Imagine what small, clever idea could transform your own corner of it. Because the fight for the planet isn't won by giants. It's built by ordinary innovators. One loop, one seed, one breath at a time. If this story moved you, share it. Subscribe for more stories where science meets hope. And stay tuned for our next episode. How Drones Map the Green Comeback The music swells. The desert fades to green. The credits roll.